show you some enhancements to the My Directions app. And, and the enhancements can be let the user enter the destinations, the addresses where you can get a kind of one-click directions, right? So right now with the, with the template app, you know, you, the, the programmer could set those. And now we're going to make it so the user can set those. And what I've done is I've added a horizontal arrangement with a text box and a button. And I, and I kind of made these guys their width be fill parent, okay? And I added a hint to my text box here, please enter a street address so, so it gives instructions to the user. So these are all kind of set, set up for me. Um, the button is called button save address, okay, so that's what we'll use in the, in the blocks editor. But this is where the user is going to enter new addresses. And that's, this way, you know, instead of the programmer customizing, the user can customize and use this app for their own, for their own benefit. Okay, we're also going to add one more component, and it's a tiny DB component from the storage drawer. Okay, it's non-visible, and this is how we'll deal with persistence, okay. So when the, when the user enters some addresses, closes the app and reopens, then we want those, those addresses to still be there. Okay? So I'm going to go to the blocks now and show you how to, how to code this. And this is just the, the app from the, the original app. Okay? And what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new variable. And this is just going to be a constant for, for our tags. And this, I'm going to name this guy addresses tag. Okay? All in caps because it's a constant. And constant you know, you, we usually give them all caps. So addresses tag, and the value is going to be addresses. And this is this is what we're going to use to name the data in our databases. Okay, we're going to use this tag. Um, this location change event, you already know what it does is it grabs the, the current address and, and shows it. So I'm going to collapse this block. We're not going to deal with, with this guy. And also the get directions. It's the same. Oops, sorry. What I want to do is collapse block. Okay, so those two those two um, blocks are probably the same. What we're going to have to deal with is the save button. So the first thing we're going to do is on this save button, I want to basically take what the user's entered in this text box and add it to my list. And my list is called destinations. Okay, so I'm going to grab a reference to destinations. And to start things out, at least right now, we put in two addresses, two fixed ones. All right. So what I'm going to do is go to my list block, and what I want to do is add an item to a list. Okay, so every time the user enters something here, click save, we're going to add what they enter, which is textbox.txt. I think it's textbox1 is the name. Um, and we're going to add that to the list. Okay, so our list of destinations is going to grow every time they click that save button. Okay, so that's great. So the variable will change, but we need to make sure it's persistent. So yeah, we've got it in our variable, but we need to stick that data into the database. That way, if we close the app, it'll still still be there. Okay, so I'm going to go to TinyDB, grab the store value block, and this is where our tag is going to come in. I'm going to grab addresses tag, and kind of the reason we set up this constant is if we decide to change this, we can just change it here and not, not worry about it every, everywhere else. Okay, so anyway, that's my tag. That's the name of the data in the database, and then the value is just this get global destination. So the list itself is what we're going to store in, in the database. Okay, so right now I believe we can add items to our database and store them persistently. Okay, you know the second thing we need to do is we need to change this reinitialize. Okay, when we're sticking things in the database, what we want to do is grab them back out when the app starts. Okay, so when the app starts, we don't want to set our destinations to some fixed list. So I'm going to take this out. What we want to do is go to the database and we want to um, get sorry I'm just updating my, my phone is got on gun out. Okay, let's bring that back up. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do is call get value, the kind of the opposite of store value. So I'm going to say, okay database, go give me a value. The tag Still is addresses tag, right? It's the same one that we stored with. It's just the name of the data. And what we want to do is stick whatever we get from the database in our list of destinations. Okay, there's one more parameter we need to deal with here. It's this value of tag not there. Okay, and what the, the key here is when you start an app, there's nothing in the database. The user hasn't stuck anything in there yet. Okay, what do you want to put in this list? When, when there is nothing there. So for this app at least, what we're going to do, we could put an empty list, 
what I'm going to do is just put our fixed addresses in, okay? And you, you might change this to have you know, some other fixed list or empty list, whatever. However you want the app to appear when it starts. Okay, once the user starts entering things, they'll be added to this, to this list, okay? So when the app starts, nothing in the database will create this, this fixed list. But later, once the user's entered stuff, we're going to actually go get what's in the database and, and put it into our, our variable. And we'll just set our list picker elements. This just shows what's going to show up in the list picker to destinations. Okay, so there's two things. We need one more, a couple more blocks. One thing we need to do is on the list picker before picking, okay, so this gets called, this gets triggered when the user clicks the list picker button, which is this choose destination button. We need to make sure list picker elements is updated. Okay, because we know the user's saving new stuff, right? And the list is growing. So we need to make sure the list picker, its elements property, which is what's going to appear, is always getting the newest list of destinations. So that they'll show up when we click choose destinations. Okay, I think we're pretty close. Let's let's try this out. I'm going to click on choose destination. We should see the fixed list of items. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to hit back. So there's there's that. Now I'm going to enter something here as a new address. Okay, and let's see. I'll just put in 2130 Fulton Street and San Francisco. California. Okay, this is which I don't need space in there before the street. Okay, this is the address of my school, USF. Okay, I'm going to click save. Okay, now when I click choose destination, you should see that one. So it's added my third item. Okay, cool. And I think if I click on that item, it should show me a map between those two, uh, between my current location and Oh, sorry, now I need to click Get Directions. So now when I click the Get Directions, it should show me a map between um, my current location and my school. And you can see that's, that's what it shows up. Okay, if I want to see the map, I can click on the map. Okay, so I can add things up there. I can choose them. The only thing I need to test is make sure my persistence is working. Okay, one way to do that is to close the companion and reopen it. Okay, this will restart the app. Right, because what we want to know is if the users entered things, um, are they still there when the app is closed and reopened? So this is really testing my TinyDB stuff. So I'm going to scan it. Um, hold on one sec. My phone is uh, projection is is not not showing. Let me let me bring that back up. Okay, yeah, my screen projection just just went out for a second. Um, so let me. Now try this. So I just restarted my app. If I click Choose Destinations, I should still see the one I added. Yeah, there's my 2130 Fulton Street. Okay, so cool. So that's that's the persistence is is working. And always remember to, to check that because you know you kind of have to do an extra, you know, close down the app, reopen it, and you should probably even check it. You know, we're testing this with the companion app, right? So you also want to download this to your phone, your app to your phone. You'll know, build it. And, and then test it on uh, on your phone just to make sure the persistence is, is fully fully working. So anyway, that's that's how you can kind of you know make an app with user generated data that's saved persistently, and you know kind of turn this app into something that can really be customized um, by the user for you know for very personal use.